Hello and welcome to the 16th Fundamental Investing with the Use of Programming tutorial. Where we left off in the last video, I showed you guys how to combine your stock screener with the Quandl data to show you the uh, you know various financial statistics that you might be interested in in companies that passed your screener's variables. Next, I want to show you guys how to incorporate the Quandl data with the screener with the financial charting um, program that I built before as well. So. That is this. If you don't uh, know it, that it's uh, the whole playlist is at, in my channel. It's just, I think it's Python or charting stocks in Python. It would be uh, this tutorial here. Uh, Python charting stocks slash forex for technical analysis. And the output of that chart uh, was the following. When you ran it, it just asked you what stock to plot. So you would tell it, and, our, and what we're going to do is actually have it plot the stock that matches or passes the uh, screen. But, for example, if we did go through with Yahoo, for example, it puts up a chart uh, like this. And so we had the MACD, the RSI, uh, the candlestick, open high, low, close here, and then some simple moving averages of the data. It was a fairly nice uh, charting uh, application basically built within Python and Matplotlib. So now what I want to do is incorporate uh, the other statistics that we've got like the uh, financial data and all that and also plot that in the same figure. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to put um, three more bars down here but of course you could replace uh, the RSI and the MACD with two of them and add one more. Uh, you could share an axis and plot all three of them actually on the same um, axes. Or you could do what, what we're going to do. So really the opportunity um, to do whatever you want is here. And if you did follow through this entire tutorial, you've got definitely the tools and the knowledge to do pretty much whatever you want. But uh, what I'm going to be doing is incorporating uh, the finance data right into here with from Quandl and the screener. And uh, that way we have a decent uh, long-term investing um, program. So with that, uh, I'm going to close out of this and let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to close out of here as well. So the first thing I want to do is let's make the space and make those axes and then we'll work on um, gathering the data, running it through the screener. So this was where we left off basically in that, in that final tutorial in the Python charting stocks uh, program series. So if your chart looks like what I just showed you, that's where you are anyways. So the next thing we need to do is come down to where we're making all these axes and we need to specify three more axes. So what I'm going to do is eventually this will be changed, um, but we'll get to that in a second. So first we're going to come down here and we're going to specify some new axes. And the easiest thing to do would be to copy and paste a similar version of what we plan to do. So, hmm. yeah, a lot of these have structuring to them. So I guess first we'll just take this one right here. So anything that has this plot to subgrid, just copy and paste it. So it's got the same data that we want. So we'll come back down. And here, that'll be the beginning. Now we also want to copy this data here. We'll come down here. Maybe. Where am I? There we go. Paste that. And obviously we need to edit uh, some of that stuff. But actually, and then the tick parameters, we want to take that as well. So come down here, paste those tick parameters, and we also are going to want to edit those uh, side things as well. So now what we'll do is, first of all, this would be axes 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and 3. And here, let me actually do one more thing too, just so we can recall where, we're uh, where we left off here, just so we can easily find this. I'm just going to put this here. Now, uh, while well, this was axis 3, we're going to change this to a 4. And now let's, well, this is also going to, instead of being a 6 by 4, since we're going to add 3 more columns, we'll make this a 9 by 4, and we'll edit the above ones in just a minute. I'm going to copy and paste these parameters now uh, 2 more times. And then this one, instead of axis 3, will be axis 4. 
through that, change those, and this will be axes 5. Now what we need to do is edit the uh, axi these other axes, so they all need to say 9x4. 9 9x4, 9 and we ought to have, yeah, it should be the last one. So it's always good whenever you're doing something like this, kind of where you're just meshing two things together. So it could get pretty messy. So you kind of want to check your progress as you go. So let's see where we stand now. Um, I'll bring it over here. We'll plot Yahoo again. And sure enough, we have a chart looking like this. So we're going to have to figure out what, what went wrong there. Because we're also not, pl we're not drawing uh, the axes that we should have drawn. So let's see. Well, initially, uh, definitely one thing I see already, <laughs> and this is, okay, so I've, I've, I think I've found our, our error here. Uh, a couple of things that we did wrong immediately. Uh, first of all, we need to put a share X in here. This isn't what we did wrong, but share X axis one, and let's go ahead and copy and paste that uh, through here. And the other thing that we need to do is specify the starting points. So this really needs to start, uh, this one, let's see, where is plot, or axis two's definition. Here, it starts at five zero, so this one needs to start at six zero, seven zero, eight zero. Subsequently, it also needs to, it can span the four columns, but only needs to span one row. So fix that as well. Oh, I didn't realize I'd flip these. I don't think that'll be an issue. Um, anyway, close out of this. Now let's rerun it. Pull up Yahoo again. That looks a little bit more what we were looking for. <laughs> so obviously we've got the dates here that we need to get rid of. And then we want to curve, or not curve, angle the dates here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll... Uh, Cut the video here and we'll continue on the next video uh, actually populating the data here. So we'll close out of here and move this aside again. And what, so what we want to do now is, if you recall, to get rid of that data, well, the first thing we want to do for the label in axis 2, no longer, should be axis 5. And then here, uh, we want to silence. I forgot where, kind of where I was, but uh, we really need to silence two, three, and four. That should do it. So let me bring that chart up again real quick, see where we stand. Cool. Okay, so now we're uh, decently arranged. We could go one step further and prune away another figure here, because as you can see, they kind of still are running into each other, but I'm not going to uh, worry about doing that if you guys really want to. Uh, feel free, just like you just find this prune command uh, here, you could prune the lower if you wanted, something like that, stagger them maybe if you wanted. Anyway, uh, mostly I'm interested in seeing the directional uh, change in, in, in these figures anyways for the fundamental um, financial data figures, so you're not at too interested in seeing the exact amount, right? And if you were, you know, then you would know where to draw the line, and you would have drawn on that line in the screener anyway. So now that we have that room, in the next video what we're going to be doing is populating that by requested stock. And then in the, in the, probably not in that video, in the next video after that, we'll add it to the screener and we'll have concluded uh, our investing program. So as always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.